In the realm of real estate, two terms frequently dominate conversations. Those are a buyer's market and a seller's market. Understanding what these terms actually mean and how they affect people's buying patterns and buying psychology is important for anyone looking to buy or sell property. Whether you're a first time home buyer, a seasoned investor, or a homeowner contemplating selling, knowing how these markets function can greatly impact your strategy and your outcome. So let's delve into what you need to know about buyers and sellers markets. So what is a buyer's market? In a buyer's market, the conditions heavily favor buyers over sellers. So this typically occurs when there's an abundance of houses or what we call inventory available for sale more than the demand from potential buyers. Several things contribute to creating a buyer's market. One is high inventory, which means there's a surplus of homes for sale, giving buyers plenty of options to choose from. Remember when there was an avocado shortage at the grocery store and you had to pay like $2 for an avocado if you wanted one? Well, that would be a low inventory situation. And once avocados became plentiful again, prices went down, AKA high inventory situation. Prices fluctuate with availability. The second contributing factor is low demand, which means fewer buyers are actively seeking properties. And this is often due to economic factors like high interest rates, market downturns or changes in employment rates. When this happens, less buyers are actively shopping for homes and that means less people competing for whatever properties are on the market. So your supply and demand balance changes in favor of the buyers. The third factor that contributes to a buyer's market situation is extended time on market, which happens when properties tend to linger on the market for longer periods without attracting offers, leading sellers to consider price reductions or other incentives to attract buyers. One surefire way to get stuck in an extended days on market or time on market situation is to overprice your home. No one wants to pay a buck 25 for a dollar bill. So why should you care what kind of market we're in? Well, if you're interested in buying or selling, the type of market we're in dictates who has the most negotiating power. And this really matters. When more options are available, AKA supply is high or demand is low, buyers have the upper hand in negotiations. You can often secure more favorable terms, lower prices, or request concessions from sellers. So here are some tips and strategies that buyers can use in a buyer's market. So number one, you want to do thorough research. Take your time to explore different properties and neighborhoods. With more options to choose from, you're more likely to find a home that meets your criteria. Number two, the second is negotiate wisely. Don't be shy about negotiating with sellers as they may be more willing to accommodate your requests in a buyer's market. The third is you'll also want to get pre-approved ahead of time. Having your financing squared away ahead of time shows sellers that you mean business and helps streamline the buying process. And number four, lastly, be patient. In a buyer's market, there's less competition and pressure to rush into a decision. Take advantage of this and wait for the right opportunity. Now let's switch gears for a moment and talk about what you can expect from a seller's market. The conditions for a seller's market arise when negotiating power is in favor of sellers over buyers. We see this when the demand for homes exceeds the amount of homes available for sale, leading to increased competition among home buyers. Indicators of being in a seller's market include one, low inventory, so there are fewer homes available for sale compared to the number of buyers actively searching for properties. There aren't as many homes available, but everybody and their grandma seems to want one. Number two is high demand when multiple buyers may be vying for the same property, leading to multiple offers on properties, bidding wars, and prices being driven up. Number three, quick sales are when properties sell rapidly, often receiving multiple offers shortly after being listed. In these cases, the cash is king saying really comes into play. Cash buyers and easy closings become a strong negotiating position. Listen, at the end of the day, in a competitive market like this, buyers have to make stronger offers and be more flexible with terms to stand out. Here are some key strategies for sellers to use in a seller's market. First off, price the home right 
Overpricing your home as in a seller's market is still not the best strategy. Remember, your home will still need to appraise for the sales price before it's all said and done. Pricing your home appropriately within a reasonable range for what the market will bear will help you attract the right kind of buyers and land you multiple offers while maximizing your profit. The next strategy you can easily employ is to enhance your curb appeal and make your property stand out. First impressions matter and perceived pride of ownership does actually earn you higher offers. The third is consider offers carefully. With multiple offers, you want to evaluate each one carefully considering not only the price, but also contingencies and financing terms and what's gonna fit your needs best. All right, be prepared to move quickly. In a seller's market, things move fast. Have your plans in place for moving out and be ready to act swiftly once you accept an offer. So, in summary, understanding the dynamics of buyer's and seller's market is crucial for making informed decisions. By recognizing the signs of each market and employing appropriate strategies, you can navigate the real estate field more effectively and achieve your goals more confidently. Remember, Market conditions can vary by location and they can change over time. So staying informed and adaptable is the key to success in real estate transactions. Stay informed, stay flexible, and you'll be set to win. One way to stay informed is to keep a pulse on what's going on in your community and your neighborhood. If you need that information, reach out to us, call us or visit our website to submit a question and we'll get you set up or point you in the right direction for the information you need. My hope is always that this information is helpful for you, that you can take it and use it in your life to help you be more informed and make better decisions and set yourself up for success. Thank you so much for tuning in. Again, if you need anything at all, drop it in the comments below and we will be happy to get back to you ASAP. See you next week.